Yeah, g'day. I like lathes. And it's about time that I moved this lathe through into a machine shop. So here's the plan. We're currently in the garage. And there's the lathe. And there's the marble. And there is the tiny little door. Now to get this lathe through this door should be pretty easy because the door is five millimeters wider than the lathe. The bandsaw is going to have to move. And not only the bandsaw, also that engine crane behind it which belongs to our number one fan, Nico. And once the shoveling comes in here, it's going to have to come and park down by this wall. So to be able to park the shoveling there, all this junk needs to be cleaned out of the corner. This is kind of my sheet metal storage. You can see there's my Coborn scraper. There's also the old Deckel G1L engraver frame, which I used to use as a milling machine. And there's also a nice big vise down there that needs to be moved. So all that gets cleaned out of the way. And I guess I'm going to have to pack the bandsaw in that corner. So it's going to get pretty tight in there. I also need to move my drill press. As you can see, it's been sitting on a temporary frame, like one of those little workmate things. And we all know there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. Behind the drill press is my round stock, otherwise known as a big mess. So that can all get cleaned up and moved out of the way as well. Eventually, once the shoulder's parked down here, then I'll be able to move the bolly out of the way, take that into the garage and... The next day. Throwing it, throwing it out. Why? I've had it for ages, never used it, so therefore it's rubbish. Right, it's... You know the way they were doing no. that in the middle? They were doing... Lift, lift, lift here. Lift, lift, lift here. Lift, lift, lift here. going out to my friend, uh, he's, he wants, th wants it, so I just give it to him. Day two. Day three. Now I knew this is going to be a tight fit, but it's really going to be a tight fit. I'm supposed to have about five millimeters total total gap. Yep, it's going to be a super tight five millimeters. So if I just scrape down the right hand side, 
it looks like I should be okay. Or not. So it looks like I'm going to need to do a little bit of wall widening. It doesn't need to be much. It's really just this lip here, I think. Well, there's some good news and some bad news there. The good news is, we're in. This is the widest part of the casting, so once that got through the door, we're, we're home. The bad news is, with that silly little slope at the doorway, the machine has now moved on the pallet jack, so I'm gonna have to jack it back up and move the pallet jack Well, now that the Schaublin's in, the next thing to do is to move the bolly out into the garage. But for that to happen, this collet closer has to come off. And to pull a collet closer, I have to pull this box. And to pull this box, I have to pull the fine feed gearbox. This fine feed mechanism is part of what gave Bolly its reputation for really fine surface finishes. Basically it uses a belt drive off the spindle, then a crown gear down to drive this gear, and then across to the main lead screw drive. And with that belt it isolates any vibration from this mechanism from the spindle, and provides an extremely fine feed. So the the final result is you get extremely good surface finish from it. Downside is you can't cut threads with it, so there should be a normal banjo and a set of change gears, but unfortunately my one, they were gone before I bought it. Somewhere along the way I did make up this bracket to hold a NEMA 34 motor, and that just clicks straight on over here. With a pulley over across onto the lead screw, I basically had my one XE CNC or whoever buys this next if they want to use an electronic lead screw. Mechanical stuff's already done. Last week I got a comment from the East London Kiwi. We referred to Spates. Now for those who don't know it, Spates is a beer that comes from, uh, I think it's from Dunedin, South Island in New Zealand. Because I never lived in Dunedin, I never really got a taste for it. I mean, it's pretty horrible stuff. Coming from the North Island, I tend to prefer some of the brews from over there. You know, when I was in the Air Force, we used to have Wednesday sport. What that meant was each Wednesday, you could leave work at three o'clock and go and do sports. My sport was generally just jumping on my push bike and cycling home, which took about <laughs> three minutes. When I was on the 75 Squadron, what we used to do is once a year, we'd save up a month of Wednesday sports, take a bus, over to Manga Tanoke to Tui Breweries and the sport was of course they'd put on a free tasting and once we'd done enough sport we'd all sort of pour ourselves back onto the bus and head back home. 
Tui's. That's one of the uh, original East India Pale Ales. Now I know that IPAs are a trendy drink these days, but Tui was never trendy, huh? They've been making East India Pale Ales since, I guess, the 1800s or so. Yeah, so a CNC lathe, or even an electronic lead screw, needs an encoder to return angular position of the spindle back so that the motion of the carriage can, can be coordinated with it for its um, thread cutting. So here you can see the encoder I made. It's got, I think, 40 indents. Down here there's a couple of LED light gates. One of the teeth is bigger, so that's my indexing tooth. Unfortunately, this pulley was already broken when I got the lathe, but doesn't seem to make any difference, seems to still work. If I had the change wheels, you'd replace this pulley with a gear to then drive the other gear train on the banjo, but as I say, that's not what I've got. Lathes tend to be very top heavy and want to fall over when you move them, so it's always good just to take off all the easy parts. To remove the chuck, I'd got, I'd got in the habit of using the chuck key to undo it, the threaded, threaded chuck, but one of the viewers pointed out that, as I knew that was a bad way of doing it, the smarter way is just putting a spanner on a jaw. Thanks a lot for that too. Three days later. A skinny little guy like me pushing around a 1.2 ton lathe like this kind of reminds me a little bit about towing aircraft back when I used to work for the airline. We used to have it that the engineers would do the towing. I remember one time towing a 767 in winter and I mean our tug wasn't that heavy. It was only, I think it was 40 tons. I know the airport had a big 70 ton tow truck that we used to call in when it was icy normally. Anyway, middle of the night, I pick up a 767, which, I mean, these things are empty, about 80 tons. Fully fueled for flight, they can be up as much as 180 tons. So I'm towing this back to the hangar for maintenance. Coming off the taxiway down onto the, the hangar apron, there was a little slope, maybe one or two degrees, not too much. But that uh, 767, it, uh, it got away. It started pushing the tug. And of course, all you can do with, with sort of icy snow conditions is put your foot down and try and keep the tug in front of the aircraft. Hopefully, you'll still have enough space to stop it once you actually get back onto dry tarmac. This will still need to be moved a number of times before I'm actually ready to park it permanently. I'll just get it out of the way for now so I can stick my bandsaw back in its place.
in a previous life, I think in some indu industrial plant in Belgium. This dual has obviously been moder modernized with modern electrics. I know it was done to meet modern safety standards, and it's done very professionally. They even put a, a wiring diagram in there. It was done by General Electric Power Controls in Ghent. Okay, so it's done in the Netherlands. It's but ugly. Having this big control cabinet on the side of the beautiful uh, 1957 style Dewall, it's kind of an eyesore if you ask me. At least it's been done to a very high quality. Well, that was a pretty productive week. I did manage to get the things done that I was hoping for. Bandsaw's back in its place. And the main thing, of course, is the Schaublin has now taken up its spot in the machine shop. I've also now got a nice clean corner over here in the shop. And I think I'll probably put the bench along this yellow wall. If you're enjoying this content, consider hitting like and subscribe, making a comment. This way we'll train the YouTube algorithm to provide more of this sort of content. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.